In this demonstration, we're going to talk about creating an adaptive optimization policy based on performance. Now, I've already created two CPGs here, one in uh, my tier 0, which would be SSD, SSD RAID 1, and my tier 1, which is fast class RAID 5. Okay, So these are the two that I'm going to use in my policy. Now, you can have up to even three tiers in a AO policy for performance, and you could put your LUN like in the nearline tier. So you could have uh, nearline tier up to fast class, and if it needed more performance, it would tier up to SSD. You could have fast class to SSD. You can have nearline to SSD. I do recommend never doing nearline to SSD, and that's because the nearline drives are so slow that in order for them to write to the SSDs, they actually end up dragging down the performance of the SSDs. And if you know, the three-part system is wide striped, so it's not going to just affect that one LUN, right, it's going to affect them all. So, you know, I you know, do recommend just one tier away for tiering, uh, especially when it comes to uh, performance. Okay, so we have, <clears throat> we have these two uh, CPGs here. I'm going to create the policy, and then if I wanted to assign a LUN to it, which I'll show you at the, toward the end here, I would just create a LUN and put it into this uh, AO1 here, which would automatically assign it to the policy. If I already had a LUN on the system and I wanted to include it in the policy, I would just do a tune VB and put it into that AO1 uh, CPG. Okay, so let's create a AO policy. And here I'll select those CPGs that I created. Okay, so RAID 1 SSD for my tier 0, RAID 5 fast class for my tier 1. There's no space being used today. Click next. I want to start or run the schedule. I can run it now, which would just run essentially run once, or I can create a schedule. That's what we're going to do. Uh, please notice the analyze only box is checked by default. You want to unselect that so it can actually run. If you want to run it in a dry run, which is not going to move anything, it's just going to give you, if you look at the task, it'll tell you what stuff that it would have moved or you know what percentages of data it would have moved. Um, or you can just uh, run it. Max runtime means this is the duration of time that it's actually going to uh, utilize uh, movement of regions for, for tiering. All right, so if, if you had this selected for something aggressive, say one hour, right, and the system calculated that it would take more time than one hour to complete its data move, it wouldn't move anything. So make sure that when you start your strategy for creating a performance-based policy that you ha give it enough time to complete that. Okay, <clears throat> so we're, like I said, we're going to do a schedule. So let's start with giving it a schedule name. <clears throat> okay, so let's do uh, advanced. And why am I selecting advanced? Because I get a little bit more granular, kind of a cron tab uh, layout, because I don't want it to run every day because the office isn't open every day, right? So let's just start with uh, days of the week, all right? I don't need Sunday, and I don't need Saturday. What I do need is I need the system to calculate and move regions on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And it'll do it on a Friday, so it'll be prepared for Monday morning, okay? So I don't need it to, to worry about or move anything over the weekend. I'm going to start it at zero minutes. And now I'm going to select uh, what hours of the day. You can do all hours, which really doesn't make any sense because what you, what you, this is just for moving the regions, right? So I, I need to select a time that it's going to actually move. And in this particular case, I would like to set the schedule so that it calculates my performance during my workday and then moves at the end of my workday. So I'm going to say at 7 p.m. So at 7 p.m., it has six hours to move regions, which would take it to 1 a.m. Right? I can even make it longer and say, well, uh, if I wanted to do my entire frame, I'm going to give it enough time to move. So I could do, well, 7 p.m. you can start, 
and then finish maybe by 6 a.m. the next morning. Okay, so again, I'm just going to have it calculate for uh, the workday and start moving at 7 o'clock, or we can say, you know, just make sure everybody's out of the office, 9 p.m., start moving data. All right, so let's just say 9 p.m. then, zero minutes, 9 p.m., Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Okay, so now we have 2100 on Monday, every day of the month, Monday through um, Friday. So my work day is from, let's say, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. So I want it to start collecting data or, or calculating the, the range of time for measuring uh, what's going to be moving just during my work day. Now my schedule will kick off at 2100, 9 p.m. and prior to its execution is when I want it to start sampling. So if we figure 6 a.m. from 9 p.m., so grab your watch, right? Count backwards. I'm going to go all the way around, get to 6 a.m. in a counterclockwise motion on the clock, and I'm going to get to 15. My number lock. 15 hours prior to execution is going to start collecting, right? So 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. So 15 hours prior to uh, the execution of 9 p.m. is going to start sampling. It will end, so stop sampling at 6 p.m., which would be three hours. Three hours prior to execution. So now I have from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. It'll calculate what needs to analyze, what needs to move. And then at 9 p.m., it's going to start moving those regions. Now we can go back up to the top here. We can address the maximum run time. Again, if I'm starting at 9 and I need it to be done by 6 a.m., right? or let's say 4 a.m., just to make sure that everything can finish up before 6 p.m., 6 a.m. and in case my boss comes in early. All right, so four. That gives me one, two, three, four, five, six, seven hours that it can run to get those regions migrated into the appropriate tiers and get ready to go for the next workday. Okay, does that make sense? I'm going to start to run it. It's not a dry run. It's going to run from 9 p.m seven hours to 4 a.m. It's going to start collecting data at 6 a.m., which is 15 hours prior to 9 p.m. It's going to end analyzing data three hours before 9 p.m., and this is my schedule task. And it's going to run 9 p.m., Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday of every month. All right, quick summary. Finish. And that's all there is to it. So now I have a performance-based policy that will run at that schedule. Now when I want to put a LUN into that, uh, into that AO schedule, I can create a virtual volume. And this is what I was saying. If I, if I created it, Let's say it's thinly provisioned or fully provisioned. And, you know, on a three-part, it doesn't really matter where it's thick or thin. Uh, where you know some technologies, it has to only be thin. Um, it, we could do thick or thin. We could do multiple configurations up to 2,000. Uh, I think it's 2,048 different AO policies. So you've got a lot to work with, and you could get really granular on what LUNs are going to do what, and and what amount of uh, time is going to be analyzed on a per configuration. Um, so tons of flexibility, right? So let's say, because um, I like everything thin, it's going to be thinly provisioned. Uh, two terabytes, called a two terabyte ESXi data store. And then I'm going to select that, uh, that fast class tier, because that's the lowest tier out of that policy. Okay, because I'm tiering up. So it's going to start here in fast class RAID 5, and as it needs to move, it'll move that data into... Uh, SSD. Now I may take snapshots of this of this particular data store. All right, so I don't want to associate my snapshots to the same CPG. 
because as they take snaps and you get updated, stuff like that, I don't want that part of the uh, calculation. So all of my snapshot space, I'm going to put in near line grade six in a different um, in a different CPG somewhere else in the on the frame. All right. So the only thing that's going to be associated to the policy are those two uh, CPGs that I created. All right. Summary page. So we can see it's creating as test PV one. It's two terabyte data store. It's going to be on that low tier, that A01, which is fast class RAID 5. And any snaps are going to go to this other uh, location. Click finish. And I'm done. Now I can export that one to my host as normal. Or I could, um, if I already had a LUN, <coughs> pardon me, if I already had a LUN that was exported, I could just right click on that LUN and say tune virtual volume, right, which is going to move that virtual volume and user space is the actual data space and I'm going to select that target CPG which is my AO1 right so before I showed you creating a VV and putting it directly in the policy and this time I'm showing you that I can take an existing VV and move it into now this does require dynamic optimization usually it comes with an optimization suite they give you AO and DO all right, so I'm going to take S test A01, and I'm going to tune it into that CPG. And now, when uh, when this LUN it finishes migrating, it'll automatically be included in the same uh, performance-based policy as the LUN that I just created. Okay. Now, one thing I would recommend is that after you do that, go back up here to this copy space. Right. So you're going to run it again. So. Uh, I'm not going to move this person's uh, CPG, but let's say that, let's say I did, I got it tuned in there, and now I want to make sure that it's, uh, that the copy space is not associated to, um, to that CPG, right? They didn't come with it, didn't migrate with it. Uh, you can go and check the, the LUN here, we can see where the copy space is, you can see the copy space, it looks like it's in the same CPG here. So I want to make sure that I tune the copy space away from that. So I'm going to say copy space. I'm going to put that right back in my in that uh, RAID 6 uh, nearline CPG. Oh, that's flexible volume. So here's the target. Sorry. Now we pick it into that nearline CPG just to, so that all copy space will be stored in a uh, a slower, larger tier of storage, and it's not going to uh, affect my AO policy at all. Okay. So there you have it. We created um, two CPGs, uh, which I, I'm, uh, you should know by now how to create CPGs. I created a uh, AO configuration that will run at our specific schedule. Um, there's one schedule uh, for this particular configuration. We put a new volume into this AO policy, and I showed you how to tune a VV into this policy. So there you have it. Less than 15 minutes. Good luck.